Hello, how are you? This is Jilly Bling, and I have a project to share with you. This project, I was finishing the one sample, and I was going to scrap it because it's way too much work. Um, but after I put it together, and I really, really, I love it. So I thought, I'm going to go ahead and do it. But just an FYI, I'm going to be busy doing this probably for a few weeks. Um, these are thank you cards. So for orders placed in the month of August of $50 or greater, I would love to send you one of these cards. This is my thank you for your order card. Um, but this is today's project. I'm getting started now. So <laughs> hopefully I'll have them done by the end of the, the month. Um, this technique is called Joseph's Coat. And I'll show you all about creating these beautiful bright images here in just a minute. We'll be using botanical layers. And um, I found it's best to focus on the, the stamps that are a little bit more bold. Um, I'll show you in just a minute. I use this one on the, um, the Joseph's Coat technique on the front and the middle. And it just doesn't work because it's really delicate. It's great for stamp and great for regular ink. But for this um, application, I'd say save the stamp for perhaps the inside of the card because it works perfectly there. Okay, and then we'll also be using something fancy dies, and that's for these two dies. I don't know if you could see this. It's done in Blackberry Bliss, and then it's layered with white, and those are both from something fancy. And then there is this die, which is just one die, and I cut it through the middle just to kind of stretch it out, and there's Blackberry Bliss there. I don't know if you could see it. You could see it over here against the, the bright colors. And in Something Fancy Dies, I think a lot of people overlook these cute little bits. So, see this little tulip looking flower? You could take that when you're die cutting. And while you're die cutting, just put it right up into here. And you'll get that cut out, which is what I did here. Then I cut it a second time, and I put the little pieces of gold right into there. It's cute as can be. Or if you just want... A little hole that will fit in here too and that's perfect for making this a tag and putting it through putting ribbon through it also the dies textured floral and that's just for this gold sprig okay you ready to get started on this I love this card I think it's so pretty Ooh okay where do we start? Let's start with pieces. Okay, so the layout came from this card I made last week, or I think it was probably 10 days ago, a masterfully made. So this is the layout. And I copied the layout just because I like it so much. Um, I think maybe I'll need to do it again, but maybe not back to back. So maybe in a few months I'll do it again, but I love this layout and this card I don't even recognize the stamp set I've been holding on to this card um, for for years waiting to try Joseph's coat and I don't know what inspired me to do it for the thank you card probably would have been better to do it for one or two cards and like I said I was going to scrap that until I put it together but isn't that pretty? So that's where the inspiration came from. Look at all these different colors through there. That looks like probably pool, Cajun craze, cherry, blackberry bliss, but very, very pretty. We'll also need a paper towel. I'll show you about that. That just brightens up the image after we emboss it. Okay, here's the papers, but I have this page open because I want to make sure to use or show you um, number seven on page 136 is embossing additions toolkit $27 and it comes with the tray the embossing buddy little tweezers and a little brush and I use my tweezers and brush this these I use on things other than just um, heat embossing but it's great to hold this and it's got a good strong hold well, the brush is kind of um, slippery. 
Um, and then the brush is great for if you have something stamped, you need to brush off a little excess powder. And also when you're cleaning out your tray, it's great for that. And then of course the embossing buddy, which I got a new one. My old one, okay, people get mad at me when I say, not mad at me, they laugh and they say, you shouldn't say that. My old one is in a little container and I call the container and this container is so old, my Betty Boop. Therefore, my embossing buddy is regularly referred to as Betty or Betty Boop. But this one in here, yep, there's one in here. It is so old that I say it's gone through menopause. Anyhow, I know you need to know that. So, the embossing toolkit is awesome. And we'll be needing a cutter score to make the fun fold shape. So let's just start with that. All these papers, I have them right in line. That's okay, they'll stay there. And I will put all of the paper cut sizes and scoring um, measurements on my blog. And my blog is jillybling.com. And I'll do that right away before I post the video. While the video is uploading, I will do that. So I'm going to score this paper. It's cut to four and a quarter by 11. I'm going to score it at two and three quarters, four and a quarter, seven and a quarter, and eight and a half. So two and three quarters, four and a quarter. And if you don't have one of these little cutter trimmers, I use mine all the time. I love this one. And I know um, Stampin' Up! has gone through a few generations and um, of reinventing it, making it just a little bit better, but I really, really like this one. And there's other brands out there, which are fine, but because Stampin' Up! isn't afraid to, hey, we have a new paper scorer trimmer, they just, they keep upgrading what they make. And I love it. Okay, so we have our paper ready to roll. So at this point, I'm going to do just a few soft folds. And then I'm going to go back with my bone folder and just make sure that they're square. And I say that because sometimes maybe I get carried away when I'm trimming and it seems like it's a little bit not straight. And this will confirm that it is straight. I'm looking at the top and the bottom, making sure that they perfectly line up with the base paper then scoring it. Same thing going this way. So this is a chance where, here I'm going to exaggerate it a little bit. Like see how you could see that corner? Before you confirm the fold, you can get it lined up. This is good, that's good. Now just make sure that your card is straight. Da -da, this one. And I see just a little hanging off on either end here. And it's probably because I didn't cut the paper straight, but I'm okay with like a 64th, just a very tiny little bit. Yeah, I didn't cut it straight. It's just a little bit off. But in the end, you can't see it. Okay, so if you're making this card at home, um, I have probably a few suggestions, but one for sure at this point. And that is... See how there's fresh freesia layers? There's one right here. There's this one. And then there's this one. So put those on first. And I say that only because, let me get my freesia layers. Um, one time I put my little piece on the wrong side. No, I put my big piece on the wrong side and then the little piece, it didn't fit. So, if you put this little piece on first, it's going to go here, then you know where the other ones go. Because if you put it on last, and this was turned upside down, you would go to put it on, you're like, oh, that doesn't fit, what's going on here? And I guess you would just have a bigger border, but rather than trying to figure it all out, put your little piece on first. And it will all work out perfectly. So use whatever adhesive you like. Go 
those are right there perfectly centered and like I said I'll put all the paper cut sizes on so you'll be at the point of just assembling too. I'm going to put glue right here on the edge and then around three of these side pieces. Right there on the edge. Are you excited about doing the Joseph's coat? I don't know why they call it. Joseph's coat. I don't know what that means. It's just like another form of resist. Okay, so I'm going to let this dry and making sure that no glue has kind of popped over on these edges. There's a little bit there, but that, if I just let it set to, to dry and none of the panels are touching, we'll be in a good place. Okay, let's do the fun part. And it's kind of borderline messy. Okay, what do we have over here? Let me get all these pieces. This is for there. These are for here. And this one is for right here. One, two, three. Okay, so we have these two pieces. So with the stamp set, if you want to plan it, you can. This bold one works good. This works good. This works pretty good. I'd say 100%. 100%, 90%. And what do I mean by that? This one, I'll show, I'll show you a good, bad example. Right here. So I was trying to do these little poofs on here. You can tell they didn't work out. And I'll hold this up close here in a minute. This big one right here, this kind of didn't work out. It's a little bit fuzzy, a little messy. Also, when you look at this, see how there is Parakeet Party right here? Then it goes to Shaded Spruce, Pretty Peacock, Fresh Freesia, Berry Burst, and Blackberry Bliss. So I was trying to get all the colors represented when I stamped it. And because this stamp here is so finely detailed, um, the powder kind of hung up in there and then trying to get the black ink into the crevices and corners was a little challenging. I probably could have tried harder at this point but I already gave up on this little piece. Also this very delicate stamp it's cute and all but once again the same problem just because it's so delicate it's hard to work with to get a good image like these here. So I'm going to concentrate on using the other stamps. And that works just fine. That's a good, bad example. That's going to get round filed. Well, I could use this for ideas for where to apply the color. So that's our next thing is applying color to the white paper. So Parakeet Party, blending brush right here in the middle. And you could use, I'm going to use sponge daubers and blending brushes just because I had them ready to go available. It probably would have been better if I did all um, blending brushes because it it's really like a nice soft image or a nice soft color and you can have the colors drift into each other easily. I'm trying to save room for the other colors. And you could see that I'm not particular at all about where the colors go. This is shaded spruce. And you could choose any colors you have. And I'm going to um, focus the green and blue colors at the bottom. And then the warmer colors, Freesia, Berry Burst, and Blackberry Bliss at the top. I did a little blackberry down there and I kind of like that. Let me see how much ink I have on here. Not much. And this is a time that if it, because when you first touch down, it's a little ugly. If that happens like that, that's kind of ugly. With this project, it's okay. And as the ink gets less, it'll get softer and softer. 
see how this is really bold and this is getting a little softer? You could tell it. I'm, I'm not really worried about the streaks. Because a lot of it's going to be covered with black. And you could use any dark color as long as it's water-based. And I say that only because you don't want to use stays on because it stays on. Stays on the Versamark, the clear Versamark powder. Okay, that's good. Next is Pretty Peacock. I might save a little room for that um, Blackberry Bliss. See how much ink is on there? Nothing. Okay, so sponge daubers are great. They come, and I think it's in a six pack or an eight pack. Um, but you could rinse them out and use them for like the same color family, like all the blues use one and um, pinks use another. Or you could dedicate it, like this is a dedicated to peacock color dauber. Sometimes when I'm applying color here, I'm like, am I really going to be stamping over there? I don't know. I'll just be thorough. Um, okay, so back to daubers. You get them in a pack, which is great. Great fun. Good value. But after time, the ink on the dauber makes the foam kind of disintegrate. And a few of my daubers, I probably have them right here. A few of my daubers, they became unhappy. They're like unhappy. So this is Blackberry Bliss. This is, I think, Peacock. But it was disintegrating. I was getting little crumbles in my pad and on my paper because they're they're tired. They get to go to Dauber Heaven. Okay. So, keeping up with the daubering, I'm trying to leave an area of parakeet, spruce, peacock. Because I could keep going, like I started to here, and I lost some of my spruce because I was doing too much peacock. You can see, not really doing it pretty. But for this, oop, I'm jumping up into spruce again. For this, it's it's fine. Oh, and you know while I have this, hold on, hold on. Where's that inside paper? Because see this paper here, with the dauber being almost dry, I just swished across, and all the colors. Peacock spruce. I hear my Roomba going. Um, I just did a little bit of each of the colors. So because I know there's not much ink on here. Just a little swish of color. And naturally it gets heavy at the edge because when you're running across, it hits the edge and the ink kind of piles up on there. But that's okay. Okay, I think we're done with Peacock. And I left a little room for Blackberry Bliss. Oh, hold on. Must be 10 o'clock. It's 10 o'clock. Roomba thinks she needs to come out. She does need to come out. I have papers all over my room. Okay, so this one, I'm trying to keep it light. A little bit heavy there, but in the end, it'll be fine. Parakeet party. That almost looks like yellow. Like a lemon lime yellow. Okay. So let's move on to the other colors. Fresh Frisha. How much ink? No ink. I'm not going to do this one yet. This is okay if it's heavy. And you know, sometimes when the ink is left on your scratch paper and it's still wet, you might pick up a little bit of that. So. Yeah, and with this project, it's okay. When can you do doppering and blending brushes and it's okay to be 
not perfect. Well, not that we're ever perfect, but usually we try harder to get it perfectly smooth. Oh, those are kind of pretty colors. Freesia. I had to get freesia in here because that's what that base paper layer is. Yeah, it's kind of a mess here. I think this is the point. Oh, so did I tell you this project? I started it, and then after making the one, um, the sample, while making the sample, I said, you know what? I need to rethink this. This is way too much work. So I put the card together thinking, okay, how am I going to redo this? Should I just stamp the leaves on there? And after I put it together, I'm like, oh my gosh, I love this. So I'm doing it, but I'm going to be busy for a while. Okay, fresh freesia is represented. And next is Berry Burst. Probably should have checked how much ink I had on here first. Okay, this I could bury. Ooh, we berry burst. Oh, that's really pretty. Okay, a little bit over here. Blackberry bliss. It can power over those colors. But I have parakeet party, fresh freesia, and berry burst. See how you could see all the colors in there? It's good that it dries a little bit softer. Okay, enough. Enough of that. Not the very first one. No, that's Freesia. Okay. Oh, and when we stamp on this one with that delicate fern stamp, we're going to emboss it. You're like, wait a minute, that's in color. Did you know if you stamp in color and get the um, powder on the, this is, um, pretty Peacock, if you get color on there right away, the embossing powder, it will stick, and you can emboss it. No color. Oh, I'm not going to, that one's last. I want it to be a little softer. Ooh. But am I really going to stamp with clear way up there? Yeah, I don't know. That's done, and you probably don't know it, but that's bordering on a masterpiece right there. I think this is fun to try. Just give it a try. Try it with friends, because none of them, none of them are ever the same. They're all, all always different. Okay. Oh, we have to do this inside. Let me see. Yeah, that's good. Well, that's pretty up there. You could definitely tell it's a different color. Okay. Good, good. Okay, now we're on to the next step. So this project, you do have to have an embossing buddy. And I say that only because after you stamp um, with Versamark, you put the clear powder on. If there's any moisture remaining in the dye-based inks, these colored inks, the clear embossing powder will stick to it, and it'll kind of ruin the, ruin the effect. So I'm going to turn this paper over. Whew, clean start. Um, embossing Buddy is going to be a little bit heavy. And if you could get the powder to get out of there, this one you can't tell very much. 
but that should be good, especially because this one is going to sit here and wait for a few minutes until we work on these beauties. Okay, so your embossing buddy. See how there's powder? That's a good thing because you really want to get any of the moisture from the ink gone. And when you stamp with the leaf and the Versamark ink, it can, um, if there's powder residue on there, it will st still stamp just fine. I guess I could, I was swishing it and I got a little bit of ink on my embossing buddy. So I'm trying to avoid swishing it. And anyhow, when you pounce it, you get lots of powder. So this one is more like a galaxy. It's kind of softened. This one is still bright. Come on. Let me turn it over. Oh, that's good. Maybe that's what it takes. Turn it over. Okay, so next step is Versamark ink and the leaves. But I need to think about where do I want to place that powder drives me crazy. Where do I want to place these leaves? And it's nice that I have a sample because the first time when I, I was doing it, it was like, I don't know where to place them. But knowing that there will be words down here um, that will help with deciding where to place those leaves. Okay, so this one can be the front. It doesn't matter which is which. I'm going to knock off, knock off some of that powder. Okay, Versamark ink. And it's important to have your um, pad well inked. Just because if it's a little bit dry, you won't get good coverage on here. And that's why you get these little freckles. But I did this one right after I inked it. So freckles are just, a few freckles are just part of, part of the plan. Okay, I'm trying to come up with a placement plan. Okay, good coverage on there. And do one right here. I'm trying to get into that Blackberry Bliss little spot. Knowing that there's going to be a label in the middle. Good coverage. I'll get right up here. Okay. Good. And then this one, which is kind of crazy. It's kind of retro. But it lets the colors show through. Okay, so that one could go... How about, I don't know, right there, just because I felt the bottom of it touch. <laughs> and then, see how I have this empty space? I'm going to do another one or two. You could kind of see the Versamark. I know Versamark is clear, but you could kind of see it being shiny on there. Okay, so this is going to go into white powder, and we'll cook it, and then we'll work on this next one. Same process, maybe different placement. Oh, and using this cute little leaf. Powder. And this is a time where it's good, if you can, to get the extra powder off because when we put the black ink over the top of this, if there's extra powder, the black ink will not stick.
Okay, so we're going to repeat the process. This one got a little curly from heat, but it will calm down once it gets cooled, and it will really calm down if I put something heavy on top of it. So when you're heating the embossing powder, um, there's different stages embossing powder goes through when it's heating. First of all, it's powder. We know that. Next, it becomes not powder and a little bit shiny, but still a bit granule. And then when you heat it just a little bit more, it becomes smooth, like how these are. And then lastly, if you heat it too long, the powder, which is getting smooth, the paper gets so hot, the paper drinks up the powder, the embossing powder, and then it becomes flat. So knowing that there's all those different levels, you want to stop as soon as the powder is completely melted and it's smooth. No more granules, but it's smooth, but not too long because you don't want to lose the shine. Okay, so let's do this inside bit. So this ins okay, the big leaf, broad leaf is over here on the right side. On this one, I put the broad leaf on the inside and you can see two of them. And then this fine little detailed one, one, two, three of them. And I was purposely trying to get my Versamark stamping with the leaf so that you could see all the different colors. I love how this page turned out. Okay, that one too. Okay, Versamark. So, this has lots of powder on it. Here we go. Okay, and then the broad leaf. It's kind of like a rainbow. Let's capture the rainbow. And I'm putting the stem down here knowing that that center um, die cut label will be covering the stem. I think we're done with first mark. Let's get this into the powder. should have done this project last month. It was Rainbow Pride Month. Pretty, pretty. Got a bit of no stamping up here. And you know what? Sometimes when you're doubting, like, oh, should I go back and, and stamp right there again? Sometimes when you just go with it, and it's like, okay, let's just see how it turns out. It it works out for the best, where it's like, wow, that really makes a statement having all that black space up there. Sometimes, sometimes, you know, hindsight. Okay, let me get my little tweezers. Left hand, I try to be left hand sometimes. I just pretend.
So these bottom bits look a little like orange peeling where maybe I didn't press as hard and I didn't get as much um, Versamark ink there. But that just might add to the effect because the black ink will go in there. And we'll do that in just a minute. Let me... Is it cool? Yeah. Let me try to flatten this one out. There. Be flat. So let's do the inside. So that just has this stamp and Pretty Peacock and then put right into the embossing powder while the Pretty, po Pretty Peacock dye-based ink is still wet. You're like, what? What was that? We're going to... And this here, I don't know if you could tell, but it has just a hint of shimmer or shine from the clear embossing powder on there. My paper is kind of warped. Okay, so here is Pretty Peacock. Get the powder ready. And you have to be quick, because you know dye-based ink. If I were to stamp right here and wait 10 seconds, it's pretty dry. If you really smooshed and pushed on it, maybe you could get it to smear, but it dries really quick. Okay, I'm getting ready. Oh, this is going to be my top. Stamp. And I could see there's a little bit of powder on it, which is good. Can you see that it's a little bit dull from the powder? That's still hot. So there's a little bit of texture on it, especially at the top. The bottom part kind of was ineffective, but up here at the top, little texture. So you could try it. It's not as good as Versamark. Okay, pieces. This one is done. Okay, we are ready to do the black ink onto our beautifulness. That's going to be like the magic. And the black ink, we're going to use a lot of the corner of the, the pad, the memento pad. My corner survived. I could tell this one's a little tired. I might need to re-ink them. Okay, here we go. So, you just put it on there. Are you cringing? Are you like, what are you doing? That's getting it, but it's like, eh, I don't know. Are you impressed? Is that just the coolest? Okay, and as somebody who doesn't like to get my fingers dirty, and I know, <laughs> you all at class, you're like, you don't get your fingers dirty. I try, but I always do. That's because you all are stamping at class, and I'm just watching you. That's why I don't get dirty. Okay, you see it starting to happen? See a little magic going on? Joseph's coat. Joseph, I like your coat. Maybe because Joseph's coat is black, and we're putting black over it. Or you could do navy or espresso. And I'm looking like I need it here. I see a little bit of green coming through there. And then purposely I'm trying to get like in the details of the stamp so that I can make the color showing through the Versamark. I want that to really pop out. I don't think it ruins the corners of your pad. I think they might want re-inking.
So if you want one of these cards that I've spent three hours on, just saying, oh, if you can, use host code. If it's under 150, use host code. If it's over 150, don't use a host code. And that is because if it's over 150, you get freebies. You qualify for 10% for free. Okay, I'm just going to let this sit over here. And if you, um, if it's under 150 and you don't use the host code, the, um, the free points just get dissolved. Okay, that one's cool. These little bits, that, this, this card turned out good. By the end of making these, it's going to be, I'm going to be good at that part. Ooh, right there. That's that's awesome. Yeah, maybe I need to re-ink it. I wonder if I have another one handy. And if you end up with um, clear embossing powder little freckles, like right in here, you could take your blends, your black blends, and just put a little touch on them, and it will make them become dark colored. Is that cool or what? And after this memento ink dries, I'm going to take this paper towel and um, wipe over the Versamark areas. Oh, that's better. And I'll brighten up the colors. Okay, so I think we're done with that for now. Like, for, for permanently. So let's work on the other bits. Let that dry a bit. And then we'll freshen it up with the paper towel. Dry. Okay. Oh, I don't like that. Clean. Okay, let's see where we were. Okay, so the black is going to go on here. Here. This piece could go on here. Stamp and seal. Stamp and seal is a good strong adhesive. It'll make these little curled up, curled down edges go flat. Okay. done so we're waiting for our fancy technique little papers to dry so let's work on this part and this part oh and then the um that little branch so i think i have them all cut out and these are all from um something fancy labels which is a lot of fun Thank you for everything. And these bits here. So do you see how that one die works? This one? Just put it, the flat part down there. Cut out the holes, do away all the little bits. And then cut it out on a scratch piece of gold. And I'll put these gold bits right in here. So if you have any label and you're like, oh, I really like the shape of this and you want it to be a little bigger, just cut it in half and you can see I'm not being real precise. I mean, you could get all crazy in here. That part, it doesn't matter. And then 
I'm going to use glue just in case I need to scooch it a bit. Then put glue right on the edge. And it depends on how big of a border you want. You can have it a really big border. But after I did all that work on my um, black and my Joseph's Coat Technique paper, I want that to show. Then get this one just to be equal. I guess this is where you could write your message. You can write it on here too. See a little bit hanging out here. Okay, that's good. And I would put these pieces in, but there's kind of a hole right in here. And I want to wait until um, I get the, the black paper underneath it. So that can wait. These can just get stuck together. Oh, and then we could do the, the rhinestones. Did you know you can make rhinestones any color you want with blends? Yeah. They're really color. They're really pretty when you color them like black or blue, like a deep color, because it's a hint of sparkle and it sparkles just the same as if it were um, like a clear color. A little bit of glue on here. Can you tell I've done a few of these? Okay, just want that to dry. And then I'll put some dimensionals. My new favorite dimensionals, black dimensionals. I've had them for a year or two. And I haven't used them. It's like, what are you going to use black dimensionals on? I just use white paper. I don't know. But an instance like this, this is why I use them. Or Halloween type cards or any color cards that have like a deep hue to them. This would be good. I didn't turn my phone off. It's dinging. So I'm just going to put three little half dimensionals on here. And that will be enough to hold it. One more. Take that paper off. I didn't make these magic dimensionals. They're just regular dimensionals. Okay. This one can wait for another card. Maybe. Yep. Mm. So this is ready. Okay, let's clean up our Technique Little Papers. Okay, so when you look at that one and this one, it's like, yep, that's a little duller, but we're going to brighten it up. Just because we used dye-based ink, and we could brush it off of we could brush it off of the um, clear embossing powder. Look how bright that is. And you'll want to just let it dry and see how I'm doing medium pressure. One time I was thinking if I keep rubbing it, it's going to get brighter and brighter. And I rubbed the shine off of the Versamark. It's not that fragile, but I was a little overzealous. Isn't that pretty? Okay, so I'm going to hold up the one I haven't done and then hold up this one and let you see the difference of kind of shining it up. Yeah! yeah. <laughs> Look at that. This one is brightened up. This one still needs to be cleaned up. Isn't that fun? And Okay, well, th well, this is a good, bad example. The embossing powder went there. Therefore, the black ink wouldn't stick. So I'm going to take my black blend, or you could take a Sharpie, and just kind of touch it. 
let it dry and it might need one or two coats but that will help make it less obvious and also if you have any down in through here you can make your images just a little sharper. Fun stuff. Isn't it good to be us, us stampers? We get to try all this stuff, play around. You know what would be really pretty? That, um, that lantern set, Lighting the Way, I think it's called, in the Bumblebees. Oh, that would be so fun. Ooh. So it could be all dark, and then you could put the die cut lantern in like metallic, whatever your favorite metallic is, and then have the bees. Or are they bees? Or are they fireflies? So, what color would fireflies be? Ooh. Okay. And you know what? I know a lot of these areas are going to be covered by the label. So I probably don't need to worry about... Ooh, a little bad down there. Okay. We are good. And the paper is still a little bit curly. Oh, you know what? I see a whole bunch of pink. I probably could use more Versa Markup or more um, Memento ink. That's better. Okay, let's start assembling this. Aren't those pretty? So, well versed marked pad. There I got good coverage. Here, maybe not so good. But that's okay. I, it's still just fine. The label's probably going to go over there a lot. This one turned out really cool. Okay, so these just get stuck down onto here. We'll save this for just a minute. And I'm not sure what's stronger, the liquid glue? I'm going to try Stamp and Seal. Stamp and Seal has been very impressive. It, um, it's strong. I could probably pull out that the super duper strong one. The stamp and seal plus. I could try that. See what the difference is. This is really sticky though. Isn't that pretty? Look how the freesia paper pulls out those colors. It feels like this looks very matte. That looks very shiny, but when I touch it, it's like I think I'm getting dirty, but it just needs to dry more. Okay, let me try that other. Stamp and Seal Plus. This is the regular one. This one costs a little bit more. And I think when this, but this one even has a lid on it. This one, when it goes on, I think it goes on in little rectangle pieces. It feels different how it goes on. Sticky. Ooh, that's sticky. There. Hmm. Hmm. Look at that. Aren't we fancy? What's the name of the label set? Something fancy. This is something fancy. Okay, so that goes right in the middle. 
Ooh, that's pretty. Right there. And dimensionals. Okay, and then let's make this thing. So nothing stamped on here. This is where you could write. That's all the room you have to write. Happy birthday, cousin. And just leave it at that. You can write over here. You can you can add a paper and write more. Oh, see, this parakeet party, I kind of wish it extended just a little bit bigger. I got carried away with the other colors. I think it's going to be fine, though. In the middle. Okay, and for these little pieces, it's very convenient they stayed in the paper. The first time around, they didn't. It was like doing a puzzle. Which piece fits in where? Well, <laughs> I can't see through it. Oh well, it'll be close. At least I'll know what order they go in. Okay, we just have the rhinestones colored, and then that's it. That's it for the Something Fancy Joseph's Coat card. Okay, rhinestones. I have three colors, Fresh Freesia, Blackberry Bliss, and Berry Burst. I'm going to... Color with rhinestones. I turned my, my phone to airplane mode, but it just keeps keeps a dinging. Okay, so the biggest one I will do in the darkest color, just to make sure it's not overlooked. So when you do this, you want to do probably two coats of color. I like to use the brush tip, but be a little gentle with it, because we don't want your brush tip to get um, thrashed. You know how they do. Okay, there's a minor difference in the colors. And if you can, get around the outside edges of the rhinestone. But, if possible, you know how rhinestone it has a blue dot underneath it? Don't hit. Oh, that one gets lost. Okay, that one gets a big one. Um, don't hit the glue dot because the alcohol will dissolve the, the glue. Okay, so the big one should have been the lighter color because it's very faint. Okay. Give them a second layer of color. Fresh Freesia. It's hardly holding up. This is dark Fresh Freesia. Well, when I look at it next to the other colors, you can see it's slightly a little purple. I'll hold it up here. I should show you my favorite. How about in Starry Sky? Starry Sky Dark. But imagine how pretty this would be on a card. If you had a whole bunch of blue little sparkly, ooh, that's really pretty. Yeah. Okay. So here we are. Much beautiful. Okay. Blackberry Bliss, Freesia, Berry Burst. So you could kind of tell just a little, a hint of color, a hint of blush. See, I did, that one won't go with this. Trying to get that glue dot. And you know, with the um, Memento Black ink on there, sometimes the rhinestones are like, I don't think I want to stick over there. Oh, you could tell that it has color on it here. Um, and if, that's, if that happens, if the rhinestone isn't sticking really well, 
just put a bit of glue under it and it will stick fine. Okay, Whew, we made it through. What do you think? Do you love this as much as I do? You see why I couldn't say, nope, scratch it? I love this. Thank you for watching and I hope you have a great day. Bye.